Hi folks and uh, thanks for joining me. You're looking at a chassis for a Philco model number 611. My dad dropped it off this morning and asked me to look at it electrically and uh, see if I could get it going again. It will not be a complete restore, more just a repair. He's going to uh, clean up the cabinet and a couple things that jumped out at me. I didn't get a chance to look at it when he was here. Got a couple or a spliced wire here and then I happened to see all these other wires here just kind of dangling in the air. But uh, they look like they're right on top of the uh, old electrolytic capacitor here. So uh, probably somebody just uh, disconnected those leads at some point in time due to a failed uh, capacitor. In addition, uh, you'll see in my hand here there's a choke and this choke was mounted and secured but this lead as well was just kind of dangling over here the black lead was attached and I think it ties back to the uh, rectifier tube anyway I checked it uh, real quick before cutting the uh, black lead and the choke is open so um, that's a problem and my guess is this, was, this would be at least one of the issues that uh, whoever had the radio would probably put this thing out of service for them. Again, the uh, choke itself is a 32-7452. I have not done any research on the choke or anything uh, to understand uh, how many Henry the choke is. Again, the DC resistance is called out on the schematic for reference. But uh, anyway, I double and triple checked, and again, it's uh, definitely open. So uh, let me get the chassis out of the way. I thought I would just take my uh, X-Acto knife here and uh, open this thing up and see if we can find anything here close uh, to the surface, maybe, where um, we can make a repair on this choke. Uh, if not, we'll look at uh, replacing it with a uh, replacement choke or take other uh, alternate uh, methods and procedures to uh, hopefully make this radio play again. Now, as I mentioned, I've only uh, checked this one device in here, so I uh, haven't looked at the uh, coils, haven't looked at the output transformer, uh, anything to do with the speaker, the other fuel coil. Again, this choke here did check good, looking at uh, DC resistance. So uh, again, let me get this off of the uh, bench here. And uh, let's uh, cut this thing open and see if we can find anything here on this uh, fuel code, 32-7452 choke. All right, I've got the uh, choke hooked up here to the meter. And again, we'll be looking at uh, DC resistance here. And uh, you can tell again it's open. One thing I wanted to do is just kind of go through the lead here again. Um, See, like I recall feeling some uh, soft spots in the uh, lead itself. So, simply, you know, the wire itself could be broke somewhere in the lead itself and not even in the transformer. So, I don't want to get overly aggressive here and cut uh, these leads up here. This feels like a soft spot here in my mind. I'm not saying it's uh, burn open or anything. And it's probably not because it's uh, not a solid wire. Um, so it's stranded. And you can see when I'm moving that around, it still shows open, but it sure does feel odd in this area. I think I'm going to just go ahead and give this a cut in this area right here just to see what we've got underneath here because it's probably something I would want to uh, repair anyway. And that would uh, equal the uh, length here of the leads I've got to this point. Looks like I do have wire underneath that point. But and again, that's still open at that point as well.
Okay, let me get my uh, razor out here, and I'm going to go ahead and just cut this uh, first layer off here and uh, see if we see anything again obvious in this point, maybe where we just got a solder joint itself going back to the uh, magnet wire that we can actually... Okay, what I did was just grab a uh, brand new razor here and I'm going to just try cutting around this area. It looks like the white lead itself goes back over into this area here and the uh, black lead itself, I can kind of feel it uh, maybe center ways uh, through here. I'm not sure. But, uh, let me just start making a small uh, cut around this area and just see if we can open this thing up. Again, I don't have anything to uh, lose because this is already uh, open. I'll continue to uh, work this and then once I get it peeled back here I'll come back and uh, flip the video back on and we'll see if I'm able to uh, uncover anything or at least get to the uh, naked wire itself. Okay, quick update here so you guys can see where I'm at. Again, I've got the uh, layers uh, peeled back here at least to the uh, solder connection here where the wire comes up and looks like it does a, a 90 and comes back down. So uh, let me continue to uh, cut away at this area here. Alright guys, here's what I found. Again, this conductor itself was underneath the uh, wraps here. And the uh, lead of magnet wire that you may be able to pick up right here on camera. Right on top of my uh, fingernail. Was attached here. But... Um, I don't think I actually uh, broke it loose, so it came loose very, very easy, so I'm not sure if I had a bad solder joint there or not. Let me see if I've got some uh, bare magnet wire here, possibly, that I can take my uh, DC meter and check again from this lead back over and see if we have uh, continuity. Okay, I think I've got this cleaned up well enough. I should be able to uh, check for uh, DC resistance. Nice uh, shiny area right in here. And I don't see any deflection on the meter itself, so... Um, I don't think that particular uh, solder joint was my uh, issue. All right, let me uh, repeat the process here and see if I can uh, get this southern lead here cut open and uh, get back to the uh, conductor itself to, to see uh, what we can find. All right, here you can see where I'm at. Uh, again, just cutting this back uh, a little at a time. So uh, let me continue to uh, get my uh, eyeballs down here on it and uh, continue to uh, cut away, see if we can find again where the uh, solder point is for this section and uh, repeat the uh, test here, check the uh, DC resistance, see if we get anything. Okay, I think I was able to uh, get this open here without compromising the connection and it looks like we've got a good solder connection here between this lead here and again, the uh, lead itself leaving the uh, transformer. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this loose in this area and try to clean this off. And again, we'll check uh, DC resistance here between this conductor and this conductor. That's uh, even showing up on camera due to the uh, size of the uh, wire. Okay guys, I can't hold this where I can get the camera close enough that you can actually see it, just again due to the gauge of the wire. But uh, I went between this conductor right here, if you can see it, and this conductor here. And it still reads open. So um, let me uh, cut around this area here see if I can expose more of the uh, wire and determine if this is the um, external winding or internal. Okay guys, I got down here and got these uh, leads again cleaned up real well and then uh, tried 
measuring any DC resistance again and uh, no luck all right let me see if I can uh, get this thing apart here I think I'd mentioned this tool in my uh, other video again it's uh, spring tools it's their uh, spring chisel so again I was able to use it and uh, get right underneath these and then take some pliers and uh, bend the ears right back up made uh, quick work though using the uh, spring tools chisel same uh, principle here to get the uh, bottom piece off here use the uh, chisel as well and then you can see I've got uh, separation um, right here in this area and there's a uh, paper divider here just to take note of uh, between the uh, material here Let me uh, go ahead and see if I can get this the rest of the way apart and uh, be able to get the uh, choke itself removed here from the uh, centerpiece. Okay, there we have it. Again, this piece popped out here. I'll have to try to figure out where it came from. I think it came from this side right here. But, um, Here's the uh, windings. All right, let me go ahead and continue to take this apart here and see if I can uh, uncover any issues here again in these first uh, couple wraps. Okay, guys, uh, no luck uh, repairing this. The uh, issue is, uh, must be deep down into the uh, core somewhere. So uh, I've cut back and then uh, just started kind of hacking away at the existing uh, windings. Anyway, let me uh, decide what to do. I may uh, use my coil winder and uh, just create a form factor out of a, a piece of wood and uh, go ahead and wind a new choke. So I did my best to uh, try to make a repair on the choke and uh, again the uh, winding itself it must be open must be more toward the core so I just started uh, cutting into it here and uh, kind of gave up on the repair itself but you see I have my uh, coil winder out and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, winding a uh, new coil for the choke or at least attempt to uh, do so first thing I did was go back to the uh, schematic and again this is a very small uh, printout so I may have missed something here but I think I'm accurate you can see the rectifier tube um, here's the uh, filter choke again that's in question it uh, shows a DC resistance of 395 ohms and uh, you can see it feeds the uh, plate to the 6A7, 78, 75 and uh, 43 tubes so I went back to the uh, tube manual and just pulled the specs and looked at the plate current. And I have those summed up here at uh, just under 30 milliamps of current. Anyway, I checked the uh, diameter of the wire on the coil itself. And uh, it appears to be a, a 36 gauge or maybe a 37. And uh, if you look at the 36 AWG, uh, I should easily be able to put uh, 33 milliamps through that in a max of 50. So um, I've already got uh, 36 AWG here in stock. And uh, you can see I already have it here on the uh, coil winder back here in the back. So um, I'll route it back up here and uh, we'll get it hooked up in a minute. The other thing that I did... Um, I needed to uh, form a square coil and it worked out perfect the uh, centerpiece here that the uh, coil itself goes on is uh, 5 eighths of an inch so uh, just a standard stock square dowel here 5 eighths uh, work perfect and you can see here I cut a piece 
and I take uh, took a, uh, a quarter inch threaded rod and uh, built it up somewhat, tied it into my coupler and uh, threaded that up to about right here. And then you see I've got a little bit of tape here on this area. This is where the uh, coil itself will reside or the coil former which I'll show in just a moment. But uh, I wanted to build that area up just a little bit bigger um, to make sure that the uh, outside diameter again of the former would slip over the top of this area. So this is what I made and uh, just let this dry overnight. Now I'm getting ready to uh, wrap this in uh, Kapton tape. Um, since this is cardboard itself, the Kapton is um, good up to about 400 degrees Celsius, 752 degrees Fahrenheit for the particular Kapton that I have. It's about 1.5 mil in thickness. And it also has a dielectric uh, strength of around 8,000 volts. So I'll wrap the area that the coil will come in contact with as well as the uh, ears themselves. Anyway, this will slip on as such here and go over the top of this area and then again we'll start uh, winding this coil. Now again, just doing the math, I'm looking for uh, about 395 uh, ohms. Um, I'll shoot for uh, probably plus or minus 5% of that. And if you just do the math itself, it works out to be uh, just under 1,000 feet of uh, 36 um, AWG wire. Once I get everything uh, wrapped up, I'll go back over it again and uh, make a, uh, a wrap or two of the Kapton tape. And then I'll uh, finish up here the outside winding when I get ready to uh, tie in my uh, lead dressing and use uh, some uh, real gaffer tape. So uh, let me get this uh, on here and uh, thread my wire through and I need to uh, just get everything set up here on my motor my NEMA motor and uh, get my power supply turned on and we'll start uh, trying to wind this coil here, see what happens. Kind of a uh, check-in point here, guys. You can see we're probably maybe halfway there. I'm going to run the windings all the way to the top of the uh, doll gears here. And uh, we'll uh, skin some of the uh, magnet wire back and check the uh, DC resistance at that point in time. Okay, let's do a little uh, DC check here. I'm going to just take some uh, sandpaper here, some... Uh, I think it's 220 or 180 and uh, just lightly scrape some of the enamel coating off that may be enough right there and I've already done the same here for the other end that's uh, the fastened right here let me grab my uh, VOM real quick Okay, hopefully that's showing up on camera. We're about uh, 306, 307. And again, we're shooting for 395. So we still got a little ways here to go. Okay, let me uh, stop this here and uh, we'll do another DC check. get everything set up here and uh, see what we've got now.
Okay, a little north of where I need to be, actually. So, uh, let me back a few uh, windings off. Four twenty-three. Let me back a little bit off. I'm going to try to fall within uh, five or ten percent of that number. I think being maybe just a little bit high won't hurt anything with modern day voltages as well. Okay, guys, I pulled off uh, numerous uh, wraps here. Again, estimating the uh, footage I was pulling off, but knowing the uh, DC resistance per foot, I should be somewhere around uh, four hundred ohms or so. And that's where I'm at, 399.400. So I'm going to let that be. Um, again, the spec, according to uh, Philco, was 395. But uh, an even 400 sounds uh, good to me for the choke. So let me uh, try to clean this up now by getting some of that Kapton tape on this and just keep all this uh, bundled up. And then we'll do the uh, lead dressing and get everything placed back in the frame. Okay, I'm going to just hold that there and uh, place a piece of the uh, Kapton tape right here. And I've already got everything pre-marked on where I want my uh, lead dressings to come out. I've got one lead here, one lead here. Okay, I think I'll go ahead and build this area up and just work this and go ahead and get the uh, Kapton tape here along the uh, bare copper wire uh, while everything's on the uh, form factor itself and attached here to my uh, jig. Okay guys, here's a uh, close look at it now. Again, I've got the uh, Kapton tape wrapped around and you can see where I'll do my uh, lead dressing here. I've got a couple black marks there notated there on the uh, form factor. And I've got again about two or three layers of the uh, tape around there so I think I'm good there. Now again I'll use the uh, gaffer tape as well which is a, a cloth based tape and uh, I'll uh, go ahead and put a, at least one wrap around here now and then uh, we'll go ahead and solder up these leads here and then uh, we'll wrap it one more time with gaffer tape. And you can see here I'm just putting in the uh, final touches here on that first layer of the uh, gaffer tape. All right, let me get the uh, soldering iron turned on here, and uh, let's get some leads here attached. Okay, let me get the uh, choke back over here, and let me grab my uh, magnifiers here. Okay, here I'm just uh, double checking that uh, I've got all the enamel off the uh, wire itself. Of course, we'll be able to uh, ohm this out before I seal it. And the uh, cool thing is, again, I'm going to have the uh, solder connections here in between a layer of the uh, gaffer tape so if we need to get back in here in the future uh, we can. 
see if I can hold that there. What I'm doing is just winding the uh, 36 AWG wire back around the uh, solder location. As such, and uh, let me get a piece of cardboard here and then uh, just create some separation here between the uh, transformer itself and where I'm going to apply solder just so I don't uh, create a new problem. Okay, that should be good there. We'll let that cool just for a moment. Again, just repeating the process here. Again, you see me kind of moving it here. I'm just trying to get both sides and make sure it's nice and clean. The good thing is about this particular uh, magnet wire, you can actually remove the uh, enamel coating. Uh, just by uh, the uh, heat of the uh, solder and iron itself. Okay. I'm going to take a sip of coffee and then uh, let's check the uh, DC resistance again. Hopefully it's around uh, 400 ohms or so, or just a little north or south. All right, let's see if all our hard work paid off here. That's uh, good enough for me, 399. All right, we're still not out of the woods yet. Um, let me uh, go ahead and try to get this protected up here now and uh, create some stability for these uh, lead wires to uh, leave the choke without damaging the uh, magnet wire. Okay, I've cut a piece of uh, capped on tape here. I think it's about the right width. And uh, what I'm gonna do is place it right across here Okay, and then my solder connections themselves will lay here, and I'm going to put another layer again of the cap on, which will insulate these uh, solder connections here. Okay, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just slip on some uh, heat shrink as well, and again I'm going to come in off this um, other side here come back toward the uh, solder joint here where the lead itself attaches the uh, magnet wire. And go past that point just a bit. And let's see if we can get my uh, little mini torch to work this morning. Looks like it is. All right, I'll do the same here for the other side. Okay, you can see I've got the uh, lead placed up here, just kind of laying there. And again, I'm going to try to uh, just get a piece of the uh, capped on tape here just to secure this in location.
Okay, and let me uh, repeat that here for the other side. Okay, I got the other piece laying up there. Let's see if I can get a piece of tape on it here before it falls off. Just do a little forming here. Alright, let's let's uh, let's do another DC resistance check here, make sure we're good. Okay, 401, 402. Alright guys, uh, I think I'm good there. Let me uh, go ahead and get more of the uh, gaffer tape and do a final wrap there. Okay, you can see here I've already got the uh, gaffer tape cut to the uh, width that I want. Just trying to get that as tight as possible. Let's see, I'm overlapping at this point. Yeah, I don't want my thickness to get past these ears. If I do, it won't fit inside the uh, frame itself. Okay, I think I'm good there. So uh, there you have it guys, that's the uh, completed uh, choke winding. Let's uh, get it back in the uh, frame now and do another uh, DC resistance check just to make sure that we're good. Alright, let's get this reassembled. You can see that I did a dry fit earlier. And uh, we'll recheck now, make sure that this does go back in there. But I've got my uh, black marks here where I wanted to run the leads out. Same thing for here. This should be a tight fit. But um, it should go back down over these uh, laminated pieces of steel or iron. Couldn't ask for it to be any better. Let's see if I can keep this in camera view. All right, let's get this thing uh, closed back up and do one final test here. There was a uh, shim that uh, was between this winding, I believe, so that's where I placed it for now. And uh, we'll see if that's right. Now this one should come right back down. I'll probably have to take that back over to the vise itself, but uh, I think that gives you an idea here what it's going to look like. Okay, there you have it guys. I've got the uh, everything clamped back together here. And I think that uh, turned out really, really well. Let's uh, double check the uh, DC resistance here and uh, make sure it's still around uh, 400 ohms or so. Again, the uh, design was 395. I ended up, I think, just north of 400. And you guys hope that's uh, showing up there with the uh, possible glare 402 ohms. So, uh, I'll get this uh, remounted in the chassis at uh, some point when I do some additional uh, troubleshooting.
and uh, we know for sure with uh, this choke which was here the winding being uh, open it would have killed the uh, the B plus voltage to uh, all the tubes that I indicated there on the uh, schematic so uh, pretty cool spending the time here since I already had the uh, coil winder that I built and the uh, 36 AWG wire and uh, just go ahead and create a new uh, coil you know what one thing else uh, I want to try to do let me see if I can read the inductance of this uh, choke with my LCR meter Okay, this would be another cool test here. Let's go ahead and check the inductance here. I would guess this would be somewhere uh, less than 10 Henry's, just based on the size of the uh, choke. But let's see if I can get that up there where we can all see it. Get the glare off. Um, there you have it. So what, we're just under uh, 7 Henry's, 6.9 and you can see the DC resistance here as well 403 so uh, pretty cool if uh, anyone else has got an original Philco 32-7452 love to know what you uh, show for the inductance if you could leave that in the comments it would be appreciated Thanks again uh, for watching.